nothing except by the strength of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me use a personal illustration when it comes to this. And forgive me if I seem boring to you or egotistical. But one of the things I learned early in my ministry was if I seek to do my will about that of God's will, I'll fail. But I think if I seek to do God's will over my will, then I will succeed. Let me give you a further illustration of that. I was preaching in Greenford, Ohio. It was a very liberal church when I went, and they went through a metamorphosis while I was there. We grew from about 15, 20 in attendance up to 100 in three years' time. And I decided my ministry is over and to bring somebody else in. So I resigned the church. <clears throat> I had two opportunities to move to diff two different locations. One was, in, one was in the central part of Ohio to a small church. The old, on the Sunday I was there, they had around 85 people there. <clears throat> And I was overwhelmed at the number of teenagers. And I began, as I was waiting to be preaching, I went around and counted those people that I thought were teenagers. Now, there's some people look like a teenager, they might 50, be 50 years old, I don't know. But I came up with all the 80 some of their people that were there, 56 of them were teenagers. When I sat down to talk to the leaders of the church, they told me, Brother Phil, we don't have a parsonage. We, we cannot pay a large salary, but we would love to have you come to work with our young people. You'll have to get a part-time job or a full-time job and work with us on a part-time basis. At the same time, I had a church in Michigan. It was a large church, about 120 in attendance. And at that time, they said that they would pay me a salary of $100 a week, which was a large salary at that time. I was going from $45 a week to $100 a week. And they had a brand new parsonage that they were just finishing building that my wife and I and Steve could move into. Boy, I tell you, that $100 a week looked big. It looked big. And I thought that brand new parsonage, what a privilege to move into a house that nobody's ever lived in before. And I grabbed it. Oh, I took the opportunity to take that particular chunk congregation in Owasso, Michigan. To be honest with you, it was the worst experience that I ever had in my ministry. And I, to this day, I think I went on my own will rather than the will of God. The only good thing I got from there was Mary Alice who was here last week. That's where she was born. I think we need to realize that if we turn everything over to Jesus Christ and allow him to fill our hearts with his strength and his might and his power, then God's going to work miracles. It was at that time that I made a commitment to God. And the point I made at that time, I, God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. To the very first church that would make a concrete offer in which I could exist on, I would accept, regardless of where it was. <clears throat> I can look back now and see success in almost every ministry I have because I turned it over to God. The second thing, what are the things that strengthen us? Oh, I can think of a whole bunch of things. And I'm sure that you're going to come up with the idea of prayer and Bible study. But let's stay right in the book of Philippians, if you will. Right in that particular book. In the very first chapter, Paul makes a statement that says, For me to live is Christ, to die is again. I think we need a commitment to live for Christ. That whatever He wants in our life, we will do it. I'm sure there are times in your life when things happen, you question the will of God, and rightfully so. 
I do. I, I never could, but this particular day, understand why my wife, who was such a good woman, had to suffer the way she did in the last 10, 15 years of her life. I never understand, but I put it in God's will. I'm going to live for Christ regardless of what happens. What about you? In the second chapter, we find humility. We've already talked about this in our communion meditation. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We need to think like Christ. We need to be pure as Christ was. We need to walk as Christ did. A dedication. Philippians, the third chapter, the 15th verse. Let us therefore, as many be perfect, be thus mine. Paul had just finished his discussion that he presses on towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. All things in the past he counts but done, waste, that he might attain the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he says, You be thus mine. You be perfect. And if any other thing you be otherwise, Mother God shall reveal even this unto you. And in the fourth chapter, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be self controlled. When you're faced with temptation, don't give in. When you're faced with depression, don't give in. Be controlled over your life. The sixth verse. Be careful for nothing, but in everything be by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, that your request be made known unto God. Pray. Pray. I, I, I think prayer is one of the most powerful things that we have. I've seen miracles done by prayer. I, I remember one time when I was living in Titusville, Pennsylvania, one of the members of the church had colon cancer. She, uh, they went up through the passage and was able to do a colonoscopy and got uh, biopsies and came back with cancer. And she was totally blocked as a result. The night before her surgery, and we didn't know what the surgery was going to be involved with, <coughs> the church got together and we prayed for her. Old Winnie Routine. I knew the doctor, knew the doctor real, real well. He was my, one of my doctors. And I remember him coming out of the surgical room and just shaking his head. That's all he did was shake his head. And he saw me and says, I should have known. I should have known. When they cut her open, they found a growth. And they removed the growth that wasn't even attached to the bowels, and her bowels were 100% clear, and their biopsy came back benign. I've seen prayers answered miraculously. That particular doctor, every time he had to perform a big operation where he would think we're in doubt, he would always call me and say, Phil, do you have a time to come to the hospital, meet me in the uh, doctor's room? And we have prayer together before he goes to surgery. Right thinking. Fourth, eighth verse. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Right thinking. Oh, how often we have evil thoughts. Uh, I, I'm one that I have to watch myself. I have to put on a helmet of salvation and keep these thoughts from coming into my mind. I think you are too. And last, to trust. And I think this is basically what Paul was talking about. Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses 11 and 12. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know how to be abased, I know how to be a, to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. 
no matter what happens. No matter what station in life you may be. No matter what tomorrow may hold. Remember one thing. If you're a Christian, you put your life in the hands of God and all things work together for good to them that love God. I can do all things which strengthen me through Jesus Christ who gives me strength. What a message. What a message. Mike said to preach short. This is my short sermon. <clears throat> There is a song, and I've been uh, just now it came to my mind. I don't know who no, I don't know who holds tomorrow, but I know who holds my hand. Put your hand in the hand of God. When things become difficult, when things turn ugly in your life, and they will, remember that you're holding the hand of God. And he will see his good. He will see his good. We're going to be seeing.